When Tomb Raider was released back in 1996, it was one of the first truly 3D games of its kind, only beaten to the punch by the likes of Super Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot. But make no mistake, Tomb Raider was quite the revelation. However, ancient treasures aren't the only things to be discovered during Lara's adventures. Yeah, you guessed it, time to unearth some glitches. So it turns out Lara Croft has a flagrant disregard for walls in Tomb Raider and nowhere is more apparent than the very first level of the game, Caves. You'll reach this room where the back end of the level is blocked off by a large wooden gate, meaning you have to go the long way round. However, if you run at this gate at roughly this angle, jump at it from a distance and then grab whilst in the air, Lara should go straight through the gate without any resistance. Now you might be thinking, great, I'm in the last room of the level, that was quite a shortcut. And that's where another quirk of the game comes into play. By standing here, you can simply turn to face the corner of this wall and then jump at it like so, and if your angle was correct, Lara should clip up to the top of the wall and allow you to keep moving forward through the level as intended. This clip is one of the many wall bugs you can exploit in Tomb Raider, with the most prominent being our next major glitch known as a corner bug. The most famous and useful glitch in the original Tomb Raider is easily the corner bug. Essentially, this is a great way to skip parts of a level and is reasonably easy to pull off. At the corner of a wall with a ledge on top of it, stand Lara like this at 45 degrees and then jump. If you're positioned a little more than 45 degrees, Lara may turn slightly to be perpendicular with the wall, in which case you'll have to adjust her position. Or if you're positioned too close to the corner, Lara will get pushed away from the wall like so. However, with the correct positioning, on the first jump, you'll see that Lara is almost pulled towards or into the wall. And on the second jump, Lara will clip to the top of the ledge. It may take some time as you feel it out, but once you understand it, it's time to start applying it to skip parts of a level. A great example is here in Lost Valley, where in order to skip going around the long way to reach the large wooden bridge and jump the gap to grab the cog, you can simply use the corner bug to clip up to the cog and save yourself some time. Another example being at the start of St. Francis Folly, where you can skip climbing all the pillars to reach the door at the other end of the room. Sometimes there'll be instances of corner bug where you'll reach the ledge above, but Lara will fall off instead. In these cases, if you roll once you see Lara clipping onto the ledge, you should stick the landing. Basically, anywhere that has this kind of setup can be taken advantage of using the corner bug, making it one of the essential glitch tools in a speedrunner's kit. But it's actually not the only wall glitch of its kind in Tomb Raider, as we'll eventually find out. But for now, let's check out something a little different. Throughout the game, you'll encounter these collapsible tiles, which are typically pits with traps below, or simply the path forward. Strangely enough, until they actually collapse, they behave like regular ledges, and can even be grabbed by Lara and climbed on, which is pretty amusing when they do collapse and Lara is now climbing onto nothing and hovering in midair. But the most useful things about these tiles in a speedrun sense is that as they collapse, if you sidestep on them, Lara will actually teleport to the ground directly underneath the tile, which in most cases is a really efficient way of reaching lower areas faster. This is used several times during a speedrun and this technique also applies to a switch in the city of Vilcabamba, where once the switch is active Activated, hold either sidestep button and Lara will appear in the water below, which is way quicker than simply falling into it. The level Lost Valley's spectacular waterfall has always been quite fun to fall over, but there's a particularly janky quality it has if you jump into the river and try to swim against the current. As Lara goes over the edge, keep holding square to swim and she'll teleport to the ceiling of the cavern and then fall back down into the water. Continue to do this and Lara will keep teleporting on a very dizzying loop. Janky indeed. Keeping with the waterfall theme, if you've ever wanted Lara to run around with her guns out whilst not actually having them out, then this is the glitch for you. And yes, I realize how wrong that sounded. In Lost Valley, position Lara at the top of the waterfall like this with your weapon of choice equipped. Then simply dive forward, and as Lara is in the air, press triangle to have Lara take her guns out. She'll land in the waterfall, and then the animation seems to get cancelled before it can end, and Lara keeps her guns in her hands without actually holding them as expected. She'll now just casually carry them around while she runs, swims, and climbs. And while she picks up objects, I mean, why not? 
If you press triangle in this state, Lara will actually take her guns out and naturally this ends the glitch. At many times in Tomb Raider, Lara will have to push these giant blocks around to solve puzzles. Or more often than not, they block the path forward, no pun intended. Where the corners of these blocks meet the corner of a wall, it's possible for Lara to jump through the seam where they join as long as there's space for her to land on the other side. By standing at a roughly 45 degree angle in the corner, simply jump forward and Lara will clip through the seam. Needless to say, this can create shortcuts, skip puzzles entirely, or just avoids pushing blocks into their intended position to carry on through a level, so it's really convenient to use this glitch wherever you can. One of the simplest and largest skips of the game happens in the Tomb of Qualipek. Usually in this level, running up the ramp towards the piece of the Skion triggers a door to close and forces you to complete a series of puzzles to be able to enter that room. However, it turns out the trigger for this sequence is right at the start of the level on this exact tile, and with a setup we can jump over the trigger and go straight to the piece of the Skion. When the level first begins, sidestep to the left and then run one step forward. Now look up and to the right and when you release the look button, Lara will begin running forward with a turn to the right. You now immediately need to jump and hopefully you'll have cleared the trigger tile. The best way to tell if you perform the setup correctly is to look up in the first room and if the ceiling looks like this, you've successfully skipped the trigger. You now want to head up the slope and dodge the boulder that begins rolling down the ramp and if you clear that, the piece of the skion is yours and now simply complete the level as usual. All in all, this skip makes the level easily completable in under two minutes which you cannot deny is pretty quick to say the least. A really strange anomaly occurs with downed enemies and changing water levels. This is more easily seen in the cistern where you have control of how high or low the water is, but once you kill a crocodile or a giant rat and it floats to the surface, if you then lower the water level, they will remain floating in the air as if the water was still there. This is of course unless there would have still been water below them, in which case they will continue to stay in the water. Now obviously this is a pretty strange glitch to witness, but it is kind of funny though too, in a really macabre sort of way. One of the most bizarre glitches in the game is one that may be triggered without even realizing it, and it's all to do with this crocodile at the beginning of the Tomb of Tehoken. It turns out that not killing this crocodile and proceeding through the level causes certain tiles or spaces to cause damage for no apparent reason. In fact, this glitch is caused by an error in the crocodile's attack distance calculation, and given the right conditions, this could also occur in other levels with crocodiles. In any case, this glitch could possibly kill you for no reason in this level and you'd be left scratching your head as to why, but now you know. Still, it's really weird to see Lara die to absolutely nothing, you have to admit. If you thought walls posed little obstacle to Lara, then you won't be surprised to learn that doors don't fare much better either. If you've ever run against some of the doors in Tomb Raider and thought to yourself, I'm pretty sure I could clip through this, then you'd be right. It can be tricky, but usually requires finding the right angle to embed Lara in the door and then repeatedly jumping until she she clips through. Like this example in Palace Midas, where you don't really need to open the door to get through it, just run and jump a couple of times, and with an angle like this, you'll clip through the door. Or my favorite example is in Natla's Mines with this door, where once again you perform multiple run and jumps, this time with a slight turn up and to the right, and you should successfully clip through the door with some effort. The best part about this door clip is you most likely won't step on the tile directly in front of the door, which actually triggers the shotgun guy to come for you, but he'll now just stay in place by the exit door to the level, which is pretty amusing. He looks like he's running, but he's going nowhere fast. So yeah, doors don't pose much of a challenge to Lara Croft. We've already seen that Lara and large gates are an oddly glitchy mix, but now we'll take a look at iron fences and how Lara doesn't see them as an obstacle at all. The first of such fences appears in St. Francis Folly in an underwater section with a resident crocodile. There is the tiniest gap above this fence that Lara can actually swim through with no great effort. And doing so not only skips having to throw a switch to get rid of the water and raise the fence, but also leaves this cool looking wall of water that's pretty trippy honestly. Another amazingly easy fence to bypass is in the city of Carmoon, where you can literally see the gap in the fence that Lara can squeeze through. All you have to do is approach the fence with the gap slightly more to the left of Lara and then simply roll. It may take you a couple of attempts possibly, but once you know the sweet spot, it's incredibly easy and satisfying somehow too. 
Slopes exhibit some particularly interesting quirks, where placing Lara one side step away from the wall on a sloped surface and then jumping at that wall facing slightly to the left or right will place Lara on top of the wall. At many points during the game, or indeed a speedrun, this glitch is used to again skip portions of a level which would usually require a lot more climbing or some form of a puzzle to reach, so understandably, it's incredibly useful. On a slope, run to the wall and then turn and side step away from it once, then turn turn to the wall angled in the direction the slope goes up, and then simply jump forward and Lara will clip to the top of that wall. Now slope glitch has way more uses than corner bug due to the sheer amount of slope surfaces throughout the game, with some being small time saves and others being massive skips entirely. Remember that fence clip in the city of Carmoon? Well, directly after that, you can use the slope glitch to skip a good chunk of the level. In order to get where you want to go, you need to set up this slope glitch like you would any other, but when when you actually jump at the wall and clip, you'll need to jump forward followed by X and circle together until you see Lara land on solid ground above. Because failing to do that will most likely result in Lara falling to her death. Uh, why am I laughing at that? That's not funny. This slope glitch lands you in a room with the key to the exit of the level. So grab it and then follow the path around until you reach another room where you can once again perform a slope glitch here to reach the exit of the level and then use the key to finish. You know, slope glitch really breaks this level, which is why it's my favorite level to try and beat fast. Before we move on from slope glitch, I have to mention that you can also use it at the very end of the game so you don't even have to fight Natla. There is a slope in the most convenient spot ever that you can perform the glitch on provided you don't die first, but if you're successful, it will clip you up to the exit of the level and to the end of the game. Slope glitch has got to be my favorite glitch in the game, and with it being so easy, you have to try it. Before we move forward, let's talk about a technique that's going to help you a lot with performing certain glitches in the game called pause buffering. You can buffer inputs on a frame by frame basis simply by pressing the start button to bring up the inventory and then pressing and holding the start button along with an input. Say like a forward run for example. So press start, then once the inventory is open, press and hold start and up on the d-pad and this should advance the game two frames and then bring you back into the inventory. And being able to make inputs like this is going to help us break the game even further. A great example of how pause buffering can help you break the game is this wall glitch in the Thor room of St. Francis Folly. Once Thor's hammer drops and the block appears, push it against the wall and then climb and shimmy to the very edge of it. Now climb up and then we want to pause buffer one frame of a walk step forward and then on the next pause buffer we want to press forward, right and jump. You should successfully clip to the top platform of this room and be able to collect the key without having to climb anything. And the cool thing about this pause buffer setup is the exact same thing could be done in Atlantis on this platform above the lava. But in this version, it clips you to the very top of the level and skips most of the stuff you'd have to do to get here. Conveniently, there's a door that opens here allowing you to get to the last room of the level, so that's handy. I couldn't go through the episode without talking about one of the most amazing discoveries in all of Tomb Raider speedrunning. A glitch state that has been lovingly referred to as the Quop. Because when Lara is in this state, she resembles the running animation of the game Quop. You see it, right? Anyway, the Quop state is special because once again, it helps you skip things. But getting the Quop state is actually very specific. But luckily, through a combination of positioning and pause buffering, it's possible to consistently achieve the glitch. Okay, so how and where would you use this glitch? Well, the first use of the Quop is seen in the city of Vilcabamba in the room with the three doors and is used to skip having to open the middle door entirely. Stand on this sloped ledge and make sure you're at the very edge of it and then climb up the smaller step. Press back to fall from it and roll and then perform one running jump forward which should land you in this spot. Now side somersault to the right once and now it's time to start pause buffering. You want one buffered input right one buffer forward and then when you come out of inventory you need to hold forward right and jump now watch closely as you'll see lara do this weird kind of jump which signals you're about to enter the quap state once you see this begin holding left so you don't hit the wall and then it's a case of guiding lara to the middle door by using this slope at the edge of the room once at the middle door aim lara at the center of it and hold x and after a couple of seconds she should pop out on the other side of the door and thus you've skipped it. Now this is a very loose version of the basics of this skip and it might take you a couple of attempts to get results but you can see how crazy this particular glitch can get. 
the second instance of the Quop happens in Natla's Mines, with the goal of being able to skip the drill that blocks the path forward, and the setup goes like this. On these red crates, get to this corner, grab at the very edge, and then drop to the ground. Roll and then somersault right, and then sidestep right once. Next, perform one run and jump forward, followed by a run and dive, which should land you exactly here. Now just backstep once, and Lara should look like this. Somersault right, backstep, and then just jump, and then finally run and jump forwards. Okay, that was a lot, but you should now enter the quop state once again, so aim for the drill and hold X until Lara pops up on the other side of it. As you can see, quop is a really unusual and useful glitch, which may take some practice, but is an essential part of speedrunning the game. Also, it looks ridiculous, which is a major plus in my book. Tomb Raider is full of amazing glitches, with so many of them being easy and fun to pull off, why not try them out? Huge thanks to all the Patreon supporters and everybody who subscribes to the channel. Love you guys. Catch you in the next episode.